This Torah class is brought to you by TorahAnytime.com. Thank you, Rabbi Gawker, for the uh, very warm introduction. But I did not squeeze you into the schedule. Adar Rabba. Baruch Hashem, we had many opportunities over this weekend, but in my mind, in many ways, this was the most important. So thank you for squeezing me into your schedule. There was a Rebbe, you know, the Rebbe had many Talmidim, and he was a big Talmud Chacham, and he knew a lot of Torah, but he was not really connecting with the students. And it was uh, recommended to the Rebbe that he needs to uh, spend time with the students and, you know, hang out with them, do with them what they like to do. So the Rebbe was told, maybe you want to go hunting with one of your Talmidim. So the Rebbe says, you know, I'm not really familiar with the process of hunting, but maybe it's a taco good idea. So the Rebbe takes the class out on a hunting trip. And they're out in the fields and they, they're all armed, everybody's armed, they're ready to... And all of a sudden there's a deer, and they all shoot! And the deer dies, the deer drops dead. And now there's a big machlekes, who shot the deer, the Rebbe or the Talmidim? So the Rebbe said it was me. Talmidim said, no, come on, Rebbe, you don't know how to hunt. The Rebbe said, I know it was me, look at the bullet hole, in one ear and right out the other. In any event... <laughs> Let me share with you the following question. We all know Haggadah Shel Pesach. Chacham Mahu Oimer. We all want to be a Chacham. What does the Chacham say? Moha Eidos v'hachukim v'hamishpatim asher tziva Hashem alakeinu eschem. What's going on over here? What are all these mitzvahs? What's the matzah? What's the marar? I mean, it sounds ridiculous. That's the Chacham. The Chacham wants to know what the mitzvahs are. I mean, this is basic Jewish knowledge. This is the most elementary level of Yiddishkeit. He doesn't know what to do the night of the Seder. Moho Edois, the Hachukim, the Hamishpatim, Asher Tziva Hashem, Oikeinu Eschem. He's not a Chacham. I want to share with you what I consider to be the most important information that a young man needs to know during their yeshiva years. We all know Rabbeinu Yoyna, Rabbeinu Yoyna, one of the great Rishonim, wrote the classic work, Sharei Tshuva. Rav Chaim writes about the Sharei Tshuva, Kol Hasvarim Kodesh, Sharei Tshuva, says Rav Chaim is Kodesh Kadashim, because many Svarim talk to different people. You know, some people are connected with Ramchal, some people are connected with Chavis Havavos. Rav Chaim Velozhina writes, Shari Tshuva talks to everybody. If I were to ask you a question, what are the two most important mitzvahs in the Torah? So you say, you know, we can't answer that question. What do you mean, what are the two most important mitzvahs in the Torah? The Mishnah says in Perkei Yavos, be careful with all the mitzvahs. We don't know the reward for mitzvahs. No, but really, what are the two areas of Avodah Hashem that we really need to focus on more than anything else? There is a clear answer to that question. There are meat and potatoes of Judaism. The Gemara says in Masech the Shabbos, I believe on the Afkof Dalet, that children walked into the base Medrash and they said a drasha that even from the time of Yehoshua ben Nun, nobody ever said such a powerful drasha. Says the Gemara, they darsh in the Aleph Beis. Aleph Beis, Gimel Dalet. And these children darshaned, Aleph Beis, Aleph Bina, Gimel Dalid, Gimel Dalim. Aleph Beis, learn Torah, Gimel Dalid, do Chesed. Hey Vav, then the name of Hashem will rest on you. The Chavetz Chaim writes that we learn from this Gemara a very important Limud, that there are meat and potatoes in Judaism. And that is, what are the two ikarim in the life of a yid? In other words, what do I need to devote my focus, my emphasis, my drive? Which mitzvahs? Says the Chafetz Chaim, number one is Aleph Bina. Limur Atayra is the most important mitzvah in Yahados. It's the Aleph base. Aleph Bina. But Limur Atayra cannot be without Gemilas Chasadim, Gemol Dalem. So number one, is Lima Taira Aleph Bina, number two is Gamal Dalim. All the other mitzvahs are in third place. And the explanation is very simple. When we perform a mitzvah, we're listening to what Hashem commands us. 
When we do chesed, we're doing more than that. We're acting like Hashem. We're not just listening. We're acting like Hashem. And when we learn Torah, we're thinking like Hashem. Okay. The two most important mitzvahs in Judaism. Limonah Torah and Gemilas Chesed. If I may, I want to ask you a question, and it requires a certain level of sophistication, which we all have. Rabbi Yaina is a Rishain. Every word of a Rishain, you could analyze, you could ask yourself, why did he say it? Why did he say it this way? Why didn't he say it a different way? Every word of a Rishain is a nugget, it's gold, it's a treasure. And we're entitled to question it and probe its depth. depth. Rabbeinu Yoyna, in the third section of Sefer Shari Tshuva, talks about something called mitzvah sase. Now we all know there are many mitzvah sase. Wear tefillin, wear tzitzis, make Kiddush Friday night, tefillah in general is a mitzvah sase, shiluach hakim, there are many, there are 248 mitzvah sase. Avraham, 248, Ramach Varim. But says Rabbeinu Yoyna, Yes, there are mitzvah sase, but there are general fields of avodas Hashem that are not just mitzvah sase, they're called mailois ho'el yoinois. Mailois ho'el yoinois means it's not just a specific act, but it's a general category. I'll give you a list of some of them, but then I want to tell you the order. For example, ahavas Hashem, love of Hashem, it's not just a mitzvah do iraisa, a dry act like tefillin, but it's an, it's an all-encompassing area of the service of Hashem. There's yiras Hashem, fear of Hashem, deveikos, kedusha. If I were to ask you to make a hierarchy of the mailois ho'el yoinois, I would make the following hierarchy. Number one, Talmud Torah. Number two, gemilas chasadim. But that is not how Rabbeinu Yoyna makes his list. Says Rabbeinu Yoyna, Ki hamailois ho'el yoynois nimsaru lanu b'mitzvah saseh. The greatest attributes are given over with a mitzvah saseh. You know what they are? Number two, and I'm going to skip number one for a minute. Malois talmud Torah, learning Torah, number two. Number three, Mailois leches bedarche Hashem, chesed, walking in the ways of God. Okay, drum roll please. What is, thank you. Good job, good job. Number one. Number one on the list. Number one on Rabbi Yoyna's list of Mailois ol Yoynois. Mailois ha The attribute of Bechira. And the question is, what in the world is Rabbeinu Yonah talking about? Mailos habachira, the attribute of free choice. It's not even a mitzvah saseh doi So, What does he mean, free choice? Free choice is a philosophical, theological concept. We know that when faced with a challenge, you need to overcome the challenge. But there's no mitzvah in the Torah of bechira. Bechira is not a mitzvah. Bechira is a concept, it's a philosophy, it's an animamin, it's a fundamental principle of faith. It's not a mitzvah dairaisa. And not only is it a mitzvah in the world of Rabbi Yoyna, it's number one on the list before Talmud Torah and before Chesed. And I was bothered to try to understand the words of Rabbi Yoyna, and I've seen many perushim, and then I think I came across the definitive explanation in the words of Rabbi Yoyna because it's not an idea that somebody had, but in one of the other svarim of Rabbi Yoyna, he writes explicitly what he means. Let's talk about the Jews in the desert for a moment. You know, they come out of Mitzrayim. Let's talk about their personality in Mitzrayim. Let's talk about their character in Mitzrayim. Think about what they were doing there for 210 years. They were working like janitors, like schleppers. They were working with cement, like laborers. No skill, no ambition. They were building buildings, didn't require great technical acumen. 
And then they come out into the Midbar and Hashem says, Vi'asuli mikdash v'shachanti b'soicham. I want you to make the finest tapestries. I want you to make the most ornate kalem. I want you to craft and mint bur- and furnace gold, silver, an aroin, a kruvim, a menoira. I want you to make something on par and much greater. You go to the Tower of London, you see the Queen's Jewels. I want you to make ornate kalim more beautiful. So the Jews said, what are you talking about? Us? We have no background. We have no skill. We're, we're schleppers. We're a bunch of slaves. You need to go to somebody who's been training for 10, 20 years under a master artist, professional craftsman. How are we going to accomplish that task? And the Torah HaKadosh says, Vayavoyu kal ish asher nisa'o yiliboy. And you know who stepped forward? The people whose hearts elevated them. Writes the Ramban, these are people who had no skill and no ability and no study. They were slaves. However, they had one thing going for them. They had ambition to reach high levels in the service of Hashem. They said to themselves that if the Rebbe Nishlam has given us the opportunity to make a Mishkan for him, then even though we don't have the physical ability and the acumen and the technical skill and the craftsmanship, but we want it so badly and their heart elevated them and lifted them up to inspire them and to bring out of their personalities abilities they did not have. Says the Ramban, look carefully at the words of the Torah. Kol ish asher Their hearts carried them. They didn't know how to build an Arayin. They didn't know how to weave tapestries. But vayigba libam bedarche Hashem. Which means their hearts elevated them. They wanted so badly to come close to Hashem. They had such ambition to do something for the Jewish people that that ambition somehow invested and instilled in them ability they literally did not have. This is the concept, says Ramban, of Nesiyah slave. Nesiyah slave is, you could be 10 years old, 12 years old, 14 years old, 16 years old, and you could look at the shelves of Shas, and you could say to yourselves, I can't even read two lines of Gemara without breaking my teeth, but I want to do something for the Jewish people. I want to be a Talmud Chacham. I want to be God-fearing. I want to improve my Midas. I want to be a leader in Klal Yisrael. And maybe I don't have the mental acumen and the intellectual ability and the character, but I want it. And you know what? The only thing it takes is you need to really want it. And if you really want it, the concept, the the phenomenon of Nesia slave, of ambition, will elevate you to the highest levels. Rabbi Yeruchim Levavitz, one of the all-time great Bali Musar, he says something that is just so powerful. We have Rishonim, a Rambam, a Ramban, a Rabbeinu Yoyna, a Rif. We have Achroinim, Rabbi Kiva Eger, Chsam Soifer. Now, what's the difference between them and us, right? What, bottom line, the Rambam, what's, why are we not producing Rambams? Why are we not producing Rabbi Kiva Eggers? Why are we not p- producing Vilna Goyen? Like, what's the difference between the Vilna Goyen and us? So I would have said, what do you mean, what the difference is? The Vilna Goyen was a genius, and we're, you know, we just don't have the intellectual ability. The Vilna Goyen was holier. He had more discipline. Like, what, if we could pinpoint... Bottom line, let's cut to the chase. Where are the G'dayle Yisrael of yesteryear? Why are the young men not developing into G'daylem that we had a hundred years ago, five hundred years ago? What is the difference? Is it physical ability, mental ability, sanctity, purity, discipline? Says Rabbi Yerucham, no, 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 no. It's not what you think. It's very simple. Go out into the business world. Who is successful? 
If you could find a common denominator between all the successful entrepreneurs, businessmen, doctors, professionals, what is it? Says Rabbi Yerucham, one thing they all have in common. Ambition. They want to reach the stars. It's not mental acumen, it's not intellect, it's not personality, it's not charm. It's one word. Yasma. Ambition. Desire. They want to reach the stars. Says Yerveni Rucham, I, I could never say such a thing. The main difference between the Rambam, the Vilna Goy, the Chsam Soifer, and us is they had ambition to reach the Shamayim and be the greatest Talmud Chacham and drive to be the biggest Oyvid Hashem they possibly could. And we don't. We cut ourselves short. We say, you know what? I'll just study for the test, hope I get a good mark, and hope to be like an okay Jew one day. Does a person go to sleep at night? I am going to do something with my life. I want to be Rabbi Chaim Knievsky, Rabbi Aaron Leib Steinman, Rabbi Avadi Yosef, a God of Yisrael, a Tamar Chacham, a Yari Shamayim. I want to know Shas. I want to know Chumash. I want to know Mishnah. I want to know the Torah. I want to do something for Klal Yisrael. I want to bring people back. I want to educate Klal Yisrael. I want to make the Jewish people bring them to a higher level. We just say, whatever, I'm just going to be what I'm going to be. Says Rabbeinu Yerucham, the main difference between the G'daylam of yesteryear and us is we don't have Nesiyas Halev. We don't have the same ambition. The Tanad Bel says, listen carefully, Chayiv Adam Loimar, Masai Yagiu Masai, Lamasai Avoisai Avraham Yitzchak V'yakov. A person is obligated to say, when will my actions reach the actions of Avraham, Yitzchak, and Yaakov? It's ridiculous. First of all, my actions will never reach the actions of Avraham, Yitzchak, and Yaakov. So why would I be obligated to say, when will they reach? I mean, isn't that... Imagine, your science teacher would say, before we begin... Everybody stand up and say, when will I reach the level of Albert Einstein? Come on, let's go. Everyone together, right? Imagine if you'd start class every day. It's ridiculous. You know, Einstein was a genius. Why should I say that? Why do I need to say that? No, but Chazal tell us, we're obligated to say, when will we reach the Madrega of Avraham, Yitzhak, and Yaakov? Can I ask you a question? Where Chazal are inventing a new mitzvah? There's 613 mitzvahs, so now they made a new one. There's a new, a new mitzvah, you ready to get this? When you wake up in the morning, you need to dive, you need to put on tzitzis, tefillin, avas Hashem, and also don't forget to say, I mean, we're, where in the Torah is that? Tzachiyuv, chayiv loymar. Where does it say? Vishte, where in the Chumash does it say that I need to say, here you have a guy, he's a god of Adar, we say, pal, but did you say, when am I going to be like Avram, Yitzhak, and Yaakov? No, I forgot to say that. Oh, you blew it. Where in the Torah does it say I have to do this? Rabbi Yoina wrote another Sefer. The name of the Sefer is Shari Ho'avayda. In Perak Memtes, I think Rabbi Yoina very clearly opens the Shamayim to us and gives us an insight into what Rabbi Yoyna says is the one thing in this world more important than learning and more important than chesed. After all, it's number one on the list. Mailas Habachira, Mailas Tamatayra, Mailas Gemilat Chasadim. The number one area and arena of Avodah Hashem, the first step in Avodah Hashem is Mailas Habachira. What is Bechira? Says Rabbi Yoyna, listen to this. Uvechol yoyim v'yoyim yoysef oymetz l'heschazek v'lalois mimida l'amida umi madrega l'madrega ba'avoyda s'boyray. Every day, you have to strengthen yourself to rise from level to level, from step to step, higher and higher. 
The Yachmoid, you need to desire. The Yichsa, if you need to yearn. Lehasig ba'avoida ma she'in yodoi maseges. To reach a level that you're not able to. When you wake up in the morning, you should say, I wish I knew the entire Shas, even if you're not able to know it. When you wake up in the morning, you're required to say, when am I going to fear Hashem? Like the Rambam, like the Ramban, even if you're not able to. When you wake up in the morning, you need to say, when will I be a Baal Chesed like Rav Aryeh Levine, even if you're not able to? Any madrega that you're not on yet, yearn for it, want it, desire it, even if you really can never get there. Yisave ileha. You know what yisave ileha? Taiva means desire, desire to reach that level. V'yivchar lehasiga, choose to attain it. Be boicher, select, choose to attain it. Says Rabbi Nuyoyna, V'yal ha-bechira bilvad yikabel schar ke'ilu hisig hamida. For choosing it, you'll be rewarded as if you attained it. Meaning, if you wake up in the morning and you say, I wish I knew kol ha you will be rewarded as if you know kol ha And if you wake up in the morning and you say, I wish I was a Baal Chesed like Avraham Avinu, when you get up to Shemayim, you'll be rewarded as if you're a Baal Chesed like Avraham Avinu. And if you wake up in the morning and you say, I wish I was Mespalel, Be'avoida like Yitzchak, you'll be rewarded as if you do that. Says Rabbeinu Yoyna, Ki ha-bechira mitzvah saseh. Bechira is a positive command. Meaning Rabbeinu Yoyna is defining Bechira as a decision and a desire and a yearning and a chuka and a pursuit and an ambition to reach the highest levels of Avedas Hashem. It's a mitzvah in the Torah. Which mitzvah is it? Shenemar u'bacharta b'chayim. An amazing thing because none of the other Rishonim speak about this. But Rabbi Yoyna says, before you start Avoid Hashem, yes, learning is the most important mitzvah. And chesed is number two. But there's something that comes before everything. There's something that precedes everything. There's something that all the service of Hashem is based on. And that is the mitzvah of Bechira. That's the mitzvah of Nesiyah slave. That's the mitzvah of, you know, we can't just come and approach Judaism and Yiddishkeit. Yeah, I'll try to keep the halacha, and I'll try to learn a little bit, and I'll try to daven as best as I can, and I'm going to be an okay Jew. No, no, you haven't reached the Aleph phase yet. Even before the Aleph phase of Yiddishkeit is what do you want to be? Who do you want to become? What do you want to accomplish in this world? You need to shoot for the stars. Says Rabbi Yoyna, if a person has an ambition to be a tzaddik, a tamad chacham, a yari shamayim, he will be rewarded as if you are. You know why? Because Chazal tell us, Misha Allah beliba ilasa is mitzvah venenas, mala Allah kili lasa. If you have an ambition to know shas, even if you can't do it, you'll be rewarded as if you know it. Because if you never get around to it, Nebuch, it was an oinus. You had extenuating circumstances. Things didn't work out. But if you want it, it's already in your bank account. I think we could suggest correctly. Do you know how Chazal know? Chayiv Adam Loimar, Mosai Yagiu Maisai, Lamasai Avoisai Avram Yitzhak Yaakov. Where in the Torah does it say, I am obligated to say, when will I be like Avraham Avinu? When will I be like Yitzchak Avinu? When will I be like Yaakov? It's a pasuk in Chumash. Ubacharta b'chayim. Choose life. Choose to want to be like Avraham. Choose to want to be like Yitzchak. Choose to want to be like Yaakov. Like Rishonim, Achroinim, like Yerabeim. So you'll ask... So logical. Why should I want to be like Abraham if it's what Rabbi Yoyna calls a madrega she'eno yocha lahasig? 
It's a level I can't reach. If I can't reach it, why should I want it? Continues Rabbi Noyayna. There's another advantage of the Chira. The more you want it, and you're Yishtadel Tamid Lahasiga, Hashem Yizbarach Yazar Oisai Bima She'in Yativa Yechayla Lahasid. God will help you get there. If you really want to be like the Rambam, you will be like the Rambam. Says Rabbi, Rabbi Rucham, the only reason we're not is we don't want it bad enough. We don't have the drive, we don't have the ambition, we don't have the desire. But if you really want it, but I'm not able to learn Shas. You know, I have a weak memory, and I don't read so well, and I don't understand so well. So really, if I really want it, if you really want it, you're going to be rewarded for it. And if you really want it, nothing is impossible. Says Rabbi Yoyna, Yazar Oisai Hashem Yisbarach B'mash in Yad Tiva Yechel Lahasig. God will help you get to levels that you're not able to get to. That is the Maila of Bechira. That is the first step in Avodah Hashem. And as a young man in Yeshiva, yes, our Limudim are number one, and our Torah personality, and our Chesed, and our Midois, but there is one thing that precedes everything. What do we want out of ourselves? Who do we want to become? What do we want to accomplish? You shoot for the stars. In Shamayim, you're rewarded as if you got there. And Shamayim will help you get there. Rabbi Yoyna lists three Mailas Val Yoynois. Number one, Mailas Habachira. Number two, Mailas Talmud Torah. Number three, Mailas Gmilas Chasadim. This is step one in the development in Avodah Hashem. I'll end with a story. 1946. So, you know, in America, for the last, I don't know, 50, 60, 70 years, one of the greatest educators in America, Tamar Chacham, historian, producer, speaker, Marbitz Torah, Rav, Rosh Hashiva, Rabbi Beryl Wine, a very multifaceted individual. And he's 11 years old. And uh, so he grew up in Chicago. His father says, you know, Beryl, we're going to the airport. A big tzaddik is coming to town. The chief rabbi of Palestine of the time, Rabbi Yitzchak Herzog, Rabbi Isaac Halevi Herzog, Zechazag Levracha, he's coming to town. And all the rabbanim and all the yeshiva bachrim are going out to greet him. And we're going to escort him to the Skoki yeshiva. So now, Rabbi Herzog was a very impressive figure. So he comes off the plane and he's wearing his shiny top hat and he's holding a silver cane. He's carrying a Tanakh in his hands. And Rabbi Wein said, we all accompanied him to the shul and he gathers in the shul and he proceeded to give alum the shashir in Yiddish. And after the 45-minute shir, Rav Herzog changed his language. He started to speak in English. He was a Rav in Ireland. He spoke with an Irish brogue. And he tells the young men the following. So I want you to know I just returned from Rome where I went to visit Pope Pius XII. And by the way, my grandfather told me the same story. He met Rav Herzog after the war in the DP camps. He says, Rav Herzog, I brought to the Pope a list of names of 10,000 Jewish children who the Jewish families gave over to monasteries, to Christian families, to save their lives during the Holocaust. And Rav Herzog presents the list of 10,000 Jewish children to the Pope. And he says, Pope, these are our children. You're kidnapping them now. Give them back. We only gave them to you to save their lives. We didn't think we would be alive. But now that we're alive, return to us our children. And the Pope flatly refused. The Pope said, I will not give back to you even one child. The rule is, once a child is baptized, he can never go back to another religion. All these 10,000 children have been baptized. I pleaded, and they slammed the door on my face. And Rav Herzog is standing there in the Skoki Yeshiva, and he's overcome with emotion. He puts his head down on the podium. 
And Rav Herzog, this elegant man, this tzaddik, great guy, he weeps bitterly at the podium. Says Rabbi Wine, the whole seabor shook. They were frightened. I was never so frightened in my life. And then the rabbi defiantly lifts up his head and he roared at us like a lion. He said, I cannot do anything for these 10,000 children. But young men, I ask of you, what are you going to do for the children of Klal Yisrael? What are you going to do to help rebuild the Jewish people? And he repeated himself again and again, what are you going to do for the future of the Jewish people? And then we lined up and we shook his hand and he looked each and every one of us in the eye and he said, what will you do for the future of Klal Yisrael? A young man in yeshiva today is from the miyuta, the miyuta, the miyuta of the entire world and of the entire world history. You know what kind of miracle it is? for a young man to be learning in yeshiva today after 3,300 years of Jewish history when the vast majority of the Jewish people are no longer part of our nation. Even today in Klal Yisrael, what percent of Jews go to a Jewish school? Minority of a minority. That means if you're here today, Hashem cherry-picked you Hand selected you. I guess he wants you to do something. I guess we have a mission. So what are we going to do? What are we going to do for Klal Yisrael? What Klal Yisrael needs more than anything else, people who know the Torah HaKadoshah, people who know Hashem's Torah, people who are ambassadors for Hashem's Torah, Yerei Shamayim, Bali Midois Toivois. Who's going to give over the Torah to the next generation if not us? If you're here today, we have to answer that call. What are we going to do for the future of Klal Yisrael? We need to thank Hashem every day that we have the opportunity to come and learn in a yeshiva. Take advantage of the opportunity and besiata deshmaya, shoot for the stars, aim for the stars. Merz Hashem, we could aim to be Chsam Soifer, Rabbi Kiva Eger, the Rambam, Mosa Yagiu Masai, Lamasai Avoisai, Avraham Yusuf Yaakov, Besiata Deshmaya. May we all get there. Thank you so much for listening. Bracha Vatslacha. You've just experienced another Torah class brought to you by TorahAnytime.com.